Welcome back to Misery Point Radio. Appreciate you being here again for another round of metal fucking awesomeness. Yes, it's true. Today, very special guest, some of you might have heard of him, plays in a legendary band called Possessed currently. Also, Played in some super epic bands. Personal favorite of mine, Dragon Lord. But also, a truly epic project called Serpent and Seraph. With his amazing wife, Cass. And another band called From Hell. You know who I'm talking about yet? Alright, let's quit the guessing game. Claudius Creamer. So I was fortunate enough to have Claudia sit down with me at the Possessed False Prophet show in Oakland, and we talked a lot of stuff. What's going on with Possessed, talked about the new single, talked about the upcoming documentary, talked about all of the things that led to him joining Possessed, and he was even cool enough to talk about, you know, what happened with the other projects he was in. You know, I didn't get a chance to talk about From Hell with him, even though I ran into George Anderson before the show, who is super fucking cool, by the way. And even though they had all the cabinets stamped From Hell, and I told myself, don't forget to ask about that. I forgot to ask about that. So we'll leave that up to another topic for another day. But I promise you, We talked about a ton of other cool stuff. And it was an awesome conversation. Claudius is super cool, super chill, really friendly. And you know what's really funny about a lot of metal dudes? They have this big persona, right? A lot of people are intimidated by them. They've got this this look that's very daunting, very intimidating, very dark. But when you talk to them, they're so down to earth and they're so friendly and they're so appreciative. And that's how Claudius was. In fact, funny story, as I was at the Oakland airport waiting for my cab, I turned around and who's standing behind me? But Claudius, (laughs) crazy coincidence. So I walk up to him, I say, hey, I'm Mike. I'm a friend of Scott's. I'm gonna be at your show. And he's like, oh, cool. And we chatted for a few minutes. And then we went our separate ways, only to meet up a couple of hours later. So, if you want to get the true behind the scenes story, what's going on with the new Possessed album, what happened with some of Claudius's other projects, and what we can expect to hear from him in the future, then hang out. Check out the episode. I promise you, even though it's another crazy, chaotic, noisy interview, it's awesome. So check this one out. Here we go. All right, and I am back in Oakland, California at the Possessed and False Prophet Show. Sitting down with Claudius here. Thanks for joining me today, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Awesome. I appreciate it. So a pleasant surprise the other day when I opened up my old... uh, interwebs and saw that you guys had released a new song and uh so is that indicative of that album being pretty close to coming out here are you uh free to say it is actually it'll be releasing in may oh my gosh you got a date yeah yeah not an exact date yet but right may (laughs) may feels 
pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Abandoned, correct? Yes. Yeah, so it definitely has that old school vibe to it, but it sounds, uh, you know, kind of modern with the guitar tones and things like that. So right. um, how has the experience been for you guys then getting back into studio? I know that you haven't been with them for, for too, too long, but it uh, looks like the band seems really tight with each other right now, and uh, and you're getting some, uh, some documentary work going into studio. Yes. So tell me about that experience. It was an incredible experience. Um, Peter Stormare uh, turned out he, you know, we were recording in the studio and he came in and he's good friends with the owner of the studio and he wanted to come meet us. Right. And we were all very excited because we're huge fans of his, right? Sure. So it was pretty cool. And um, after hanging out for about an hour with him, he decided he wanted to film a documentary on us. Yeah. So... The next day, he's in the studio, full film crew, and they were documenting everything. And um, uh, the past two nights at the Whiskey A Go Go, full film crew. Yeah. Peter and his crew there, just filming, and that's awesome. It's a great time. And man. so they they got the whole the whole process, the entire recording, step by step from the get go. Then absolutely. Are we uh, going to look forward to seeing a full documentary then around the time of the album release, or is that going to come out down the road? Yes, um, uh, from what I understand, it's going to come out possibly just before the album. Oh, and before the album. Before the album. Dang. And also, what I understand, it might be out on Netflix, which is pretty cool. That's fucking badass. Yeah, right. How weird would that be to like turn on Netflix one day and you're on there? Hey. That's surreal. That's pretty cool, <laughs> yeah. So, um, how did you get hooked up with Possessed anyway? You know, that's kind of an interesting story. Um, the guitar player, Mike, he had to leave. And Jeff knows everybody in the world, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, even people that, uh, yeah, that yeah. he doesn't know, they know him. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, so he asked everybody he knew, you know, who would be a good guitar player, you know, that he could, you know, that the band could try out. Right. And he said he got my name back like over a hundred times. Okay, he was familiar with your work from uh, from Serpent and Seraph or from Dragon Lord or he actually wasn't familiar with the bands, even though uh, Serpent and Seraph had played with Possessed. Um, but you know, Jeff's so busy at the shows that you sure know, he doesn't get a chance to see the bands and whatnot. So. Yeah, he's pretty mobbed. Yeah, so. Of course, I was like, really? Of course I'll do it, yeah. you know? And, um, yeah, that was 2016. Yeah. And um, I learned all the songs and came down to L.A. to rehearse with the band. And I was, like, instantly family. Yeah. You know? Well, that they had talked about recording for a long time. What was... Had it already started by the time you joined the band? Was it already in process, or did they get you guys all in place and then start? The writing process had had begun, yeah. Um, and we finished it all up and fine-tuned everything after after I had joined. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's been an absolutely incredible experience. I mean, even the fans have welcomed me like I've been here since the beginning. Yeah. It's it's really, uh, it's an honor. Well, your style fits in pretty good. Um, I'm being somewhat familiar with your work from the other bands that you've been in, but uh, you play fast <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, and intense, and, uh, and it fits in kind of with what Possessed is known for. So what's different about playing with, with this band than bands you've played with in the past? I would have to say the family atmosphere. Yeah. It's, it's really, like I said, you know, from the very beginning, coming to the first rehearsal, I felt like family with them. Yeah. They're like the greatest group of guys I've ever played with. Yeah. Everybody gets along. There's no kind of drama, you know. It's just, it's really cool, man. Yeah. And uh, Emilio and Bobby have known each other for a long time and, and played yeah. over the years through different projects and whatnot. So yep. so you were just able to kind of come right in and they just treated you like a brother from the get-go? Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, curious about, uh, if you don't mind me asking, though, uh, with Dragon Lord, um, you're not involved with that project at all anymore? No. No? And what happened with that? 
Uh, what happened with that is uh, Eric Peterson, he got very, very busy with Testament. New, so new Testament busy. stuff, yeah. Yeah, they've made a huge comeback, and I'm so happy for them, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's incredible to see that. Yeah. You know, and uh, so it just kind of got put on the back burner for a long time. Yeah, there is a very long storied uh, history behind them getting support from, you know, labels and touring and being able to to play and even get that last album put out. But uh, super cool melodic stuff, um, intensely heavy. And uh, that kind of transitioned into your, your work as I was talking to you a little bit ago with, uh, with as it turns out, it's your wife that I didn't know with Serpent. Yes. Now that project was super awesome. And uh, I remember thinking it was an awesome combination of just super brutal heavy music and those vocals just badass yeah, she's incredible man yeah and and so um what happened with that project i mean it seemed like it was just taken off strong and then just was it because you had to join possessed and make a commitment or well what happened with that was we put so we put everything we had into that band yeah. i mean literally it was our whole entire lives you know what i mean for five years and it was doing so well yeah um great band the songs were great we yeah. had so much fun doing it and kind of what happened was we spent an awful lot of money <laughs> and as it happens with your passions right and at that time that kind of stuff wasn't really going on yet was, so it was kind of kind of ahead of its, its time, time. Yeah. yeah and with her brutal death metal vocals and then switching right to an opera it was. It would give me chills all the yeah. time. You know what I mean? And She's just incredible. Did you, you got to hear that then in its raw, unrehearsed forms too? I'm assuming. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys just have your? We're gonna sit home and jam and practice shit, and she would belt it out like that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. dude, that's out of control. Yeah. And yeah, so it just uh, did it not gain the the um, backing that it needed to keep it going. Right. Yeah. That's what um, we had shopped it to all the major labels and nobody was really biting on it you know and we filmed a, a video with uh mike sloat yes and, i've seen the video yeah it's he's super he's high production yeah and, you know everybody you can imagine machine head you know incredible yeah you know videographer and uh the video as you said you've seen it um it was awesome just yeah. it got like twenty thousand views overnight when we released that right well, it's super high production quality. The The imagery is awesome. The audio is awesome. I mean, it was literally, everything just sounded nailed and spot on. So uh, yeah, kind of bummed out to see that, that that couldn't continue then. Yeah. But uh, it didn't seem like it was that much longer than before you got involved in what you're doing now. Right, right. Um, yeah, so we kind of, how would I explain it? Um, the wind just went out of the sail, you know. Yeah. We tried so, so hard, and it just wasn't going where we wanted it to, you know what I mean? Sure. We wanted to share that with the world, you know, and it, uh, like I said, the wind just kind of went out of the sails when it wasn't, the labels weren't biting on it. And, sure. You know. That And this industry is tough because, you know, you're forced to make decisions on, do you follow just something that you're passionate about and you just do it for the love of it, and then... Man, I right. gotta eat. I gotta make a living, and I gotta I gotta move forward on something that's gonna provide a, a tangible means of of keeping it going. So right, and we actually formed that band. I formed it around my wife, in fact, because I was on kind of hiatus from Dragon Lord because Eric was so busy. Sure. And my wife, she's a very beautiful woman. Oh yeah, know? absolutely. And she's very talented. So a woman in in the industry, they don't get the respect, or people don't want to they don't hear it even though they're hearing it you right know what i'm saying it doesn't have that level of acceptance that uh their counterparts would say get right so she would try to join bands and you know it turn out to they're trying to date her you know or whatever <laughs> right? and she was getting very frustrated so i was like i said i was on hiatus and um i had recorded some tracks you know at our home studio right and uh she, I was gone to work one day and she recorded vocals to it and she was reluctant to let me hear it you know I'm like oh come on let me I begged her oh she just busted it out on her own yeah yeah so finally I talk her into letting me hear this 
and I just was floored instantly like, oh shit, right? You know? This is crazy. So, and we were just dating at the time. So, you know, instantly I'm on the phone with trying to hand pick a band, right? I'm like, <laughs> I need this bass player, this drummer, you know, we're gonna do this, this and that. And a lot of people, they didn't take me seriously. Oh, it's Claudius and his girlfriend, blah, blah, you know. Right. And a lot of the guys that I had approached after we got that thing off the ground came back to me going, oh my God, I can't believe I passed this up. Right. I, I'm kicking myself for this, you know? Sure. So uh, that was kind of cool too, you know? Well, I guess that leaves the door open there for the future though. If somebody gets their hands on it, maybe, you know, as we're now seeing Possessed and False Prophet and what's old is new and what's new is old, right. shit has a way of kind of coming back around, right? Is she still active then? Is she still playing or? Uh, she she's done a couple cover bands. Yeah, she really enjoys singing all styles of music. And sure, she's so good at it, you know. Awesome. Um, it's interesting you say that it might come back around. I've had a lot of people come at me about it. Right. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. His name was Michael, uh, keyboard player from Ingve Malmsteen, got Holy a hold of me. Crazy. And he's like, dude, we got to do this thing. I'll play keys for you, and you, we got to do this right now. And, I'm like, I'm sorry, man. My wife doesn't want to do it anymore. She just, you know, she really burned out on it. Sure. Because she literally managed the band, booked the shows, did all the flyer work, everything. I mean, she was so involved in it. You know? Right. It was That was her baby. Yeah. It was yeah. a full-time job for her. So, you know, like I said, when it wasn't going as quickly as it should have, she really lost Sure. The will well, it's good. easy to uh, get the wind taken out of your sails when you've put everything into. And I know all about <laughs> putting efforts into bands and buying tons of gear and spending all the money on the, all the you know uh, travels and hotels and stuff like that. You know, and yeah, it's just it's it's an expensive. You know, music is it's an expensive hobby and yeah. it requires thick skin, I guess to say the least, because you're just always faced with people who are two-faced or they say one thing and do another or you know maybe even if they're behind you they're behind you in words but not always in action so it's uh, really tough to pick out who your friends are in the industry that's for sure yeah 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 so 2017 nuclear blast you guys have signed with yes um how has it been to work with those guys fantastic yeah you know that that in itself is a dream come true for me sure you know what i mean uh to be on the biggest metal metal label there is in the world you know yeah Amongst you know everybody, Megadeth and you know Testament, Slayer, you know it's it's incredible. Yeah, they've uh, definitely been at the forefront uh, of, of a lot of you know heavier acts. Um, are they super supportive with you? Are are you getting what you need to, to get the record done? And Absolutely. are they are they helping you guys out with the touring and the merch and all that kind of yep. stuff? Yep. Awesome. They're they're right behind uh, right behind us all the way. It's really cool. Um, so, how is it different than other labels that you've worked with and working with these guys? You know, my experience with a lot of the other labels, um, Possessed being um, the biggest project I've ever been in. Yeah. Um, the other labels I've worked with were independent labels. Sure. That, you know. And a lot of times these days, what they're doing is they'll take a band who already spent all their money recording the record and they'll go, oh, well, we'll slap our name on it. Right. And oh, we'll just take, you we'll know, take all the money, take all your money. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, no, you know, so that I've seen that happen so many times. It, it hasn't happened to me, but sure, I've seen it happen to many. But they're backing you guys pretty good to get oh, yeah. this album out. And, and yeah, I'm sure that they want this album out. They're absolutely excited about this album. And, uh, you know, their words to us was every song is an instant classic. Right. You know, they're they're stoked about it. Do you, uh, are you able to say what the name of the album is going to be yet? No. No? Uh-uh. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping. But uh, how about, uh, there's been a lot of, over the years, you guys have been known to kind of throw some new songs out there playing live. Um, can you confirm any of the songs that are going to be on the album? Um... I, uh, of course, um, abandoned, abandoned, and sh shadow cult. Right. 
And uh, those were already released, but the demo versions. Right. And um, I'll tell you, the uh, demo versions are nothing compared to the album versions. Right. It's, Fully re-recorded, done from scratch oh yeah, again. Absolutely. And, yeah. The solos are different. Oh, okay. I mean, so it's, it's going to be quite a surprise. I mean, the people who have come to the shows... Right. They've they've heard they've heard the songs the and new version, yeah. yeah. So right now there's only one new song put out there. Are you gonna release more songs uh, in anticipation of the album coming no. out? No, that's it, huh? Nope, that's, that's your that's taste. It. That's your fucking teaser? Yeah. Oh man. And in Brutal. my opinion, I think uh, two was too many. Yeah. Well, you know, it's only what, three three or four months before we theoretically get the album coming out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, lastly, let's talk real quick about those fucking SP guitars, which I'm madly in love with. Oh, um, yeah. How did you... Uh, describe how you came into uh, getting Scott to build you one of these guys. One day I was on Facebook and Scott wrote me, friended me, and wrote me and said, hey, how's it going? Right. You know, and I talk to everybody who writes me. Always. Sure. You know, I enjoy talking to fans or, you know, whoever. You know, right. I, I love people, you know, so... I started talking to him, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, man, I make guitars. If you want, would you be interested in checking them out?" So he sent me some pictures, and I was like, "Oh wow, dude, these things are <laughs> you're like, amazing." You're you know? probably thinking, "Yeah, some random guy wants me to play his guitar." <laughs> right? Yeah, I've been there and done that. You know? Sure. So I'm just like, "Holy shit, man, these things are incredible!" You know? Yeah. And uh, we just instantly became like best friends. You know what I mean? He's, right. Now he's literally one of my best friends. Yeah, and he's teching for you too. He's, so. Yeah, he's the greatest <laughs> dude, you know. And um, so yeah, we started talking about it, and uh, he said, "I'll make you a, whatever design you want. We'll make it your signature model." So me being a Randy Rhodes freak, right. you know, and Jackson Rhodes V's, of course I would go with that body style. Sure. But, but it's exaggerated. It's not just, uh, right. it's definitely not just a Rhodes. I've, I'm notorious for not wanting to play guitars that everybody else plays. Sure. I like that uniqueness, you know? So I was like, let's flip it upside down. Yeah. Let's do that fucker upside down. Yeah. That's awesome. You know? And how involved were you in the, in the full design of it? Oh, every step of the way. Yeah. yeah. Picking yeah. out the woods and yeah. So what is that? It's uh, it's mahogany with like a flamed maple cap, flame maple top. Yeah. And uh, ebony stringers. It's it's <laughs> incredible. Oh yeah, man, those things are beautiful. I actually saw that unboxing video. Was that like <laughs> right. on your front lawn or something? That was in our drummer Emilio's uh, driveway. Okay. Yeah. That was like it was a story he was telling me that was uh, right before you guys were getting ready to go on a show, and he's like, "I got to get in this fucking guitar." Yeah. And then it arrived right before you left. It was a fiasco getting it from North Carolina to to me, and we received it the day before we left on a European tour. Yeah. For. Vakin and Bloodstock and, you know, Metal Mean and, you know, all these incredible festivals, right? So we filmed me unboxing this thing and yeah. it got like, I don't know, 20 something thousand views like yeah. overnight. Yeah, it showed up in my feed and I was like, oh, click on this. Oh, holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. So you, that was the first time you'd obviously seen the finished product. Oh, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Bust out the knife, crack open the cardboard on the fucking lawn. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and I couldn't find a knife, so I'm using a screwdriver trying to <laughs> cut the tape, you know. It was hilarious. So, um, so yeah, it was a little scary, too, because I, I had my uh, DBZ guitar with me, which was my main guitar. Right. That I always tour with. Right. And uh, so I had that with me just in case, you know. And I had one day of rehearsal with the SP guitar before, like I said, we, you know, we flew out the next day we were playing Vakken in front of a hundred thousand people. Yeah. You know, and you were using the guitar that you weren't familiar with. Right. Crazy. But that's how incredible Scott is. Yeah. He is an amazing luthier and hundred percent self-taught too, which is even that much awesomer. Right. If and, that's and a word. He does it for the love of metal. Right. He loves metal, you know, and he just loves, he loves people too. You know, he's just a great dude. Yeah. That happens to be one of the most amazing luthiers you can ever imagine. Right? Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah. the the list keeps building. So, 
Now that's your main guitar now then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you don't have backups. <laughs> no. Uh, scarily. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Scott was uh, tuning up his guitars like, oh yeah, they don't have backups just in case something else goes wrong. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. That's the faith that you have in the machine. <laughs> yeah. I actually broke a string at OzFest. Oh no. Yeah. And uh, Scott immediately had me back up and running before the end of the song. Oh yeah, he's it quick. Was like, boom, 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 done. Yeah. So, so uh, I was at the Suffocation show, uh, which is where I did my my interview with Scott. But I got uh, up close with uh, two of Hobbs' guitars. Yeah. And uh, Charlie's guitar. And uh, what do you think? And is there another one in your future? Yeah, we're working on uh, the Claudius number two down the road when you know he gets caught up with his fifty million uh, builds right. he has on the bench <laughs> right now. So what's what's the Claudius number two going to be? It's going to be the same same shape. Okay. Um, instead of the V headstock, we're going to go with the reverse headstock. Okay, like the SP signature kind of headstock. Right. Yeah. Um, although that the V headstock is super awesome. badass. I yeah. love it. You yeah. Know? But it's like well, it's I a V do... in a fucking V. I mean, you know. right? I just I want the same guitar, but let's make it a little bit different so people know it's a different one. You know right. what I mean? Versus, oh, that's the same guitar he always plays. You know, I right. don't want to be the exact same. Well, and you guys don't do like you don't have to have multiple guitars because you're fucking with like different tunings in the middle of your set or anything right. like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, man, that's that's beautiful. And uh, that guitar, when it comes out, the Claudius number two, is there going to be an unboxing on your lawn? Oh, absolutely! Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, he gets it to you before like you actually have to leave on tour this time. Right? right? <laughs> yeah, Amazing. please. Yeah, please get you one day to get familiar with a new piece of gear. Yeah. So and uh, yeah, that's amazing. So after this show, what's next? You're you're heading back home for a little bit and taking some time off, and then uh, yep, heading home for a while. Uh, uh, like I said, I believe the album will release in May. Okay. And we're already on the whole list of uh, festivals in Europe again. For June, so so you'll be uh, taking some time off. Are you going to play any more before the album? Uh, I don't know yet. I yeah. think that we're in talks right now. Possible April, May. So I would assume with uh, Nuclear Blast being behind it, once the album launches, we're talking full scale tour to support it. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. Well, uh, looks like they're getting ready to finish up here, so uh, we'll we'll cut you loose and let you do your thing. But uh, Claudius, thanks for taking the time and talk with me. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you, brother. So, there you have it. A badass interview with one of metal's most sought-after guitarists. And like I said, I didn't get a chance to talk about everything I wanted to talk about because it was so crazy and chaotic. But what's coming here in the future from Possessed more than makes up for it. So if you're not excited already, well, you should be, because there is very little that is more exciting than actual new material from Possessed. So, if you like what we're doing, do me the solid. Stop by the old Book of Faces, give the old uh, Misery Point Radio page a like, follow the show, definitely appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, all those crazy places where podcasts are found. And while you're there, eh, feel free to leave me a review. Appreciate the hookups. And of course, don't forget to stop by the old Instagram page and follow that there, at Misery Point Radio, and also Twitter, at Misery PT Radio. And lastly, I'm going on a booking spree. You want to come on the show? You want to talk about your badass project you got in the works? Doesn't have to be just musicians, guys. Artists, entertainers, authors, actors, musicians, you name it. If you got something you want to share, I want to help you out. So feel free to reach out, DM me. That's cool. I respond to everything. I promise you. So as always, thanks again for hanging out with me here on Misery Point Radio. And I can't wait to do this again with you all real soon. Take care.